In today's video, I'm going to share 10 micro changes or habits that I've made that have drastically changed the quality of my life. When we think about micro habits, we're thinking minimum effort, maximum gain. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Angeline and I share all things wellness, fitness, self-care, and I'm also a mom of two toddlers. The reason I wanted to come here and film this video for you today is because my friends are always amazed at how organized my home is, how organized my children's schedules are. So just wanted to share some quick tips with you that might resonate with you and that maybe you can use in your daily life. Now, some of these are kind of random, but this is definitely something that's worked for me and hoping that I can inspire you to make some micro changes in your life as well. Number one, and this is probably the most important one on the list. In my house, we practice that everything has its place. What I mean by this is if you take something out of its place and you're finished with it, you have to put it back in its place. This works for every single room in my home. My children are five and three years old and I practice this in the playroom as well. Once they're finished with the toy, it has to go back where it came from before they can select a new toy. This has worked wonders in keeping my house tidy. And I think it's also setting my kids up with good habits as well. A trick for this is to never leave a room empty handed. So we've all done it. We've left items at the bottom of our stairs, hoping that whoever is going upstairs is going to grab that item. Make a rule that whether you're going from your kitchen to your living room or your living room to your office or from downstairs to upstairs, you never leave empty handed. Always grab something, put it back in its place. I think it's important too, if you have a partner or a family or a roommate that you're all on board with these micro habits. I mean, if you share your household with multiple people, you can't be the only one going from room to room, putting things away. It kind of has to be a shared habit. And I always tell my kids that this is their home, their place, room, their rooms, and they need to respect all of their items and respect our home by putting things back where they belong. Number two, every morning I do a quick 10 minute sweep of the house to tidy up and declutter. This is kind of related to the first one, but at nighttime when my kids have gone to bed at 7.30, I do not want to be cleaning my home. And for the most part, because we follow step one so well, there isn't a lot of clutter around my house. However, when I wake up in the morning, there's always things that seem to be out of its place. So while my kids are brushing their teeth and getting ready for the day. I'm quickly zooming around the house and putting things back where they belong. And it only takes me about five to 10 minutes and it makes a huge, huge improvement in the quality of my day, but also keeping my house clean and organized. Number three, when you get home, you always empty out your gym bag, your diaper bag, your backpack. So when I get home from the gym, I make sure that I take any of my dirty socks or dirty clothes out and put them in the hamper. I take my water bottle out and put it by the sink. That way I know that it's gonna get cleaned and when I wake up the next day to go to the gym, I'm not gonna be dealing with dirty socks and unwashed water bottles. When my kids get home from preschool, they're required to empty their backpacks of their lunch and water bottles, put it in the kitchen, and also any other dirty clothes or art that they had accumulated in their backpack throughout the day just so that the next day everything is good to go and all cleaned. Again, I think it's a really good habit to get your kids into. It's something that they're capable of doing. My kids have done this since they were two years old. It's very easy for them to grab their lunch bag and their water bottle from their backpack and walk it to the kitchen. Just keep a clean sink. And I know it's so easy to let dishes accumulate throughout the day. There's nothing more rewarding than waking up in the morning and walking to your kitchen and having it be clean. It doesn't have to be a full deep clean of your kitchen every day. Once you're done a meal, spend five minutes to put those dishes in the dishwasher, turn the dishwasher on. And honestly, you'll thank me the next day when you come to your kitchen and it's not full of dirty plates and dirty pots. All right, my next three tips are kind of all related to laundry and clothing, taking out the clothes you're going to wear the night before. And this one for me, if you've seen some of my other videos, you know, is a really important step that I take at my time because I wake up so early for my morning workouts. It is so beneficial for me to choose my workout clothes right down to my underwear to make sure that everything is good to go and I'm not scrambling in the morning looking for things. If you have toddlers, you know you can't be choosing your toddler's clothes the day before because when they wake up in the morning, 100% they will throw a tantrum or do not want to wear what you chose for them. So I let them choose their own clothes in the morning. I just make sure that 
that their clothes are all visible, they have clean clothes to choose from, so that there's no headache in the morning. What I will do is if we do have to go somewhere early the next day with my kids, I will choose their clothes for them and just explain to them that, hey, tomorrow we're going here and this is what we need to be wearing so that we're comfortable. You know, 99% of the time they're on board with that. Now, something that's been a game changer for me is having two different laundry baskets. I work out a ton, I work from home, I go into the office downtown. I just, I just wear a lot of clothes throughout the day. My kids wear a lot of clothes throughout the day. I have two different laundry hampers. I know some people follow this rule, but they have one for their darks and their lights. For me, I have more of a laundry basket for my delicates of what I'm gonna wash in a delicate cycle. Things like, you know, certain undergarments or my workout wear. And then I have another laundry basket for my regular cotton clothing that doesn't necessarily need to be washed on a gentle cycle. And this makes it so much easier to see that the basket's full, grab the basket of delicates, throw it in the laundry. I know everything that's in there needs to be washed a certain way. I'm not wasting time picking and choosing and deciding what needs to be washed where and when. And then also I don't run the risk of having maybe a not so full load. My kids also have their own laundry baskets and they are a little bit too young to do their own laundry, but they will tell me when their laundry basket is filling up. That's when I know I need to go and do laundry. Yes, I do a lot of laundry. I have at least two loads of my own. My husband has two loads of his own. We also do the kids Kids laundry I have two kids so they each have their own load a good rule to follow is do one load of laundry a day now I know what you're saying you're thinking you don't need to be washing your clothes every day and you're absolutely right but what about your sheets and your towels there's a lot of laundry that needs to be done so if you do one load of laundry every day you will stay on top of this. Today, everyone's laundry baskets are half full. I don't need to do any clothing laundry. However, I think it's time I wash my son's sheets. I'm gonna take his bedding, put it in the wash in the morning, make his bed, and he's good to go by this evening. And tomorrow, I'll wash my daughter's bedding. My next set of tips have to do with organization. My friends always are amazed at how organized I am with my children, but my hack that I'll share with you actually makes it so easy. So I always leave a to-go bag by the door. Now, when my kids were younger, it was a diaper bag. I had diapers, wipes, spare clothing, snacks, all the stuff that you needed for babies, and that was ready to go by the door. So if I was going on a walk or going to get groceries, all I have to do is take that bag, put it in the car, and I'm good to go. Now that my kids are a little bit older, I still need this bag, but obviously the contents have changed a little bit. They still need changes of clothing, wherever we go they get very messy or if they have an accident lots of snacks hand sanitizer so I just keep that by the door and if we are gonna go on a walk I'll just simply add their water bottles put it in the car and I'm good to go so I'm not scrambling before we're going anywhere to try to find clean clothes to put in a bag and you know snacks and making sure we have everything we need I just keep it by the door and it's good to go an extra tip that I always do is I empty the car every time we get home so making sure we take out any garbage cups from the cup holders. My kids threw their sweaters and hats on the ground. We pick that all up and bring it inside, including my to-go bag, so that we can refresh it for the next time that we're out. Now, as my kids get busier, as their schedule gets busier, as I enroll them in more activities and they make more friends and we have play dates, something that has helped my husband and I a ton is having a shared Google Calendar. We are Android users, so we just use Google Calendar, but I have it right here on my home screen. It's a shared calendar, so if I have something come up, if I have plans with my friends, I will put it in and he can immediately see that so when he goes to schedule something he knows exactly where everyone is at any given point this has been so helpful for us you can't say that you didn't know something was coming up or an activity was coming up because it's in the calendar for both of us to see and we're both accountable and responsible for looking at the calendar now with the very busy schedules I find it very helpful to also pre-schedule all appointments and what I mean by that is when you're at the dentist when you're at the doctor and they say do you want me to schedule next year's appointment or your appointment six months from now? The answer should always be yes. So obviously you don't know what your schedule is gonna be like in six months. My schedule is crazy. I definitely don't know what my schedule is gonna be like a year from now. I always say yes, I put it in the calendar and a few weeks before that appointment, you know, if it doesn't work with my schedule, I'll just call and reschedule. But if I don't have those pre-scheduled appointments in there, I'll 100% forget to take my kids to the dentist. I'll forget to take them for their eye appointments, to the doctor's appointments for their checkups. I will forget all of that. So pre-scheduling the appointments is huge. I also pre-schedule all my own appointments because you know it's so hard to stay on top of your own appointments as a mom. Pre-scheduling them is a game changer for sure. You know, none of these micro hacks have to do with my appearance at all. It's all about organization and my day-to-day. -day. If you're 
interested in my 10 micro beauty hacks, I will be sharing that in an upcoming video. So be sure to subscribe if that content excites you. So those are my 10 micro habits that actually improved my life drastically and how I've managed to stay so organized and keep a clean home as a mom of two toddlers. Thank you so much for being here and for watching my video. I appreciate you so much. You have no idea how much I appreciate all the love on this video and all of my past videos as well. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up so that the algorithm knows to share this video with other like-minded individuals. I hope you all have a great day and bye for now. Thank you.